Hello, welcome to Zigma Tech Learning Hub. I will be your instructor for fine art. You can call it visual art as well, cultural and creative art. Now for this class, we are going to be taking our exercises from the exam guide app. Now, if you don't have this application installed already in your device, I will advise you download this app in order for you to follow along this class. Now, Exam Guide is a leading educational app that helps students prepare adequately for exams, for various exams, such as UTME, post-UTME, WASE, GCE, KCPE, IJMB, JUPEP, Calbepedia, BESE, JSCE, NCEE, NECO, to mention but a few. You can download the app from our website, www.examguide.com or you can download it as well as using your Google Play Store. Please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell to update, to be updated on new videos as we upload. Now, if you're ready for today's class, okay, let's get started. Okay, welcome to today's class and um, today we'll be looking at the history of art. In bracket, you can say the origin or prehistory of art. So that is what we'll be looking at today. And um, our specific objective, some of the things I would want you to know at the end of this class, is to be able to state the origin of art. Now you'll be able to explain the stages of artistic movement. Then you'll also be able to state the futures of art of each of the following eras we are going to learn in the, in, in the topic. And then we'll look at the materials and tools used by the prehistory men. And then finally, we'll also talk about the functions of the prehistory art. All right. So having said this, now you look at the image we have there. It is just a, I will make I will I will make you go through that image over and over and over again because it has a lot to do with what we are going to learn in this topic. Now, first, if you watch, you see the first I'll call him a guy there coming and then he crescended and grew grew down to the extent of he became a man and started walking upright and before he collapsed. Okay, so that is just exactly what we are going to see throughout this topic. All right. Now, a history of art is the study of the past creative artworks done by men throughout ages. Now, there are a lot of people that have lived before us. And now those people, they did a lot of things. Some of them lived in caves, some of them, they were just wanderers. they were naked, they don't have no place to go, you know, they just, they just live like that. Now, why we are learning this is to help us to carry us from the beginning down to the current age of where we are now. Now, these artworks are studied through the developmental level of man as he gradually evolves and responds to the changing in what in his immediate environment. The development of man are also divided into what four different stages. Now, the artworks are called prehistory artworks. They are called what prehistory artworks. Now, what is prehistory artwork? I will still tell you what that means as we proceed. Now, prehistory. Now, this prehistory period falls in when before the invention of writing prehistory period these are period that fell before the invention of what of writing now let me take us back to to the memory lane now in the fall of the 1879 century in spanish there is an amateur archaeologist who is known as masalio now him and his daughter they went to a cave and while they were busy searching, the dad was an archaeologist. Now they are looking for ancient artworks. The, dad, uh, the, the, the daughter, Maria, left the father and then she was wandering, you know, inside the cave. Only for her to look and then she saw some beautiful paintings and she shouted, Daddy! And the dad came, you know, that was the beginning of what? The, 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 the discovery of the prehistory art. So from that time till now, several caves have been discovered. They have been saying we are several artworks we are what we have we are we are we are we are made we are drawn now some of these artworks some of these artworks are paintings on the wall why some of them are what engraved artworks now this made maria the first archaeologist to discover what ancient art okay 
Now, like I said initially, that these were artworks that were done even before the invention of writing. Now, during this age, artworks were found on the wall of caves. Some of these earliest paintings were done by men, while some of them were engraving and they reflect the diverse situation that man passes through from time what? in memoria. Now, prehistoric stages. Now, there are five major prehistory stages, but in the course of the study, we're going to take them one step after the other. Now, the first prehistory period we're going to look at is known as the Paleolithic period, or you can say the Paleolithic era. The Paleolithic era, or you can actually call it what? The Old Stone Age. Now, that's the first period that was the man had. Now, from this period, they crescended to the second period, which is known as the Mesolithic or the Middle Stone Age. The Mesolithic or the Middle Stone Age. Now, this period, I will still explain in details what each and every one of this period represents and what each of them stands for. Now, we also have the Neolithic and the New Stone Age. You can call it the Neolithic period or the New Stone Age. Now, this is another period under the prehistory period. Now, between this period, as it crescends or as it grows, you know, things change, men develop, you know, from this to this, from this to this. In the course of the study, I'm going to explain this bit by bit. I also have what the bronze or the bronze period or the bronze age. And finally, we have the iron age. So these are the major five stages of what the prehistory are. All right. So now let's look at the Paleolithic period. Now, the Paleolithic period begins from 2.5 million to 10,000 BC. That is before Christ. Now, if you watch the image you've seen there, you see that's the movement. Now, the first, what I call it a chimpanzee or something, represents the Paleolithic, the first age. That is when men were totally naked. You know, there, 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 there is a school of thought that believe that men then were, were like apes. You know, that is the school of thought. Why some other school believe we came from Adam? The Christian part of it, you know, so whatsoever you believe, we know there is a period that is known as the Paleolithic period, and this period exists between 2.5 million years ago to 10,000 BC. Okay. Now, what exactly is this Paleolithic period? Now, this is the age when human beings had no particular place to live. The Paleolithic men we are wanderers; they move about searching for their food. Now, let me paint a picture to you, for for you, so that you just understand it. You have a grip of what I'm trying to explain. Now, this period, within this period, men, they were wanderers. They wake up in the morning and they start moving. So wherever they find themselves that day, that is that with them. Whatsoever they see to eat, that is that. If they didn't get anything to eat, that is how they still choose to live their life. But however, they move from one place to another. They don't have communities. They don't have houses. They just maybe sometimes they sleep under trees. Sometimes they sleep under caves. You know, they just live recklessly without aim and, what, and direction. They just live like animals. So, little wonder some of the school of thought feels or think that men were apes. Because eventually, that was exactly how they lived. They just, they just lived like apes. All right. So, now, now they move about searching for food and later sought refuge in cave. They made weapons from stone. Now, remember, I called the Paleolithic period the Old Stone Age. The Old Stone Age. Now, they make their, their, their weapons and their tools from what stone that is why it is called it's not because then there was no iron no metal no bronze nothing it was just the wood and what the stone so therefore they use the stone to make their what their tools and most of their paintings might have been what done with charcoal and etting color mixed with what animal fat in our subsequent class previously i talked about i just made a briefing on this now that they make some of their paintings with etting clay you know with etting color like leaf or clay, you know, or something. Sometimes they even paint with their blood, with the blood of animals. And then they'll now mix it with what? With the fat. That is what they use words to create their paintings. All right. Having said that, now if you look at the image you have there, uh, this is just a perfect example of how their hunting look like. And like you see, they're all naked and then with spare, that's with a sharp wood. And with this other one with a stone on his hand. See, so that's how they hunt the animals during this paleolithic era it was an interesting era anyway it was perfect for them they 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 they, they did a lot they really did a lot all right now the paleolithic men did not believe in god they just live an ordinary life 
They, their paintings were done on walls of their cave, which served as what? Their houses. Now, remember, I told us that they live in caves. And now these caves serve as their houses. Now, the early men, the early men are regarded to be as what? Cavemen. We call them cavemen because they live in caves. But we no longer live in caves. Now, rather, caves are, are for, for tourism, you know, for excursions. You go there for fun. You don't live in caves. So we now have beautiful buildings where we live. So, but then they live in caves. Now, notable discovery of such artworks we are seen by the French what, officers while marching around the Sahara Desert. Now, the theme for some of these engravings are haunting scene. Some of these works that we are seen by these, you know, officers that we are marching in Sahara Desert, we are what, haunting scene. These are paintings that we are done on the wall of what content scene, like the previous painting I showed you, the previous drawing, especially I showed you, that explain exactly how they hunt their animal. So some of the paintings we are content scene, and even some of the engraving they did on the wall. You see the human beings holding arrow, and then the animals like elephants. We see leopard, etc. And now some of the locations that these paintings we are found. The first locations that the painting was found is in what? Sahara Desert, the Oran Sahara Desert. Now, the second discovery was done by the Tisili Aja, also in Sahara Desert. Now, these are the places where the swords were found. And also, not to forget, in France, the very first person I told us that saw the first painting, her name is what? Is Maria. Put that at the back of your mind. Maria, she's a little girl that went with what? With the father for, you know, for, for the search of one thing or the other. All right, now look at the painting we have there. Now this painting is the painting of Fiza, which was discovered in Iraq, within the Tapilo and the what, Timbuktu. Now these were the places where this painting was found. Also, like I told us initially, of the one discovered by Maria, which is what, at Atamera Cave in Spain. That was the very first place they discovered this painting. Now the last coast painting in France, which is skillfully drawn in the 1997 discovery. It was named after Jean Colbert. And all these are some of the discovery that were discovered under this Paleolithic period. Now, the Paleolithic men did not clothe themselves. Put that at the back of your mind. Because they might ask you in your exam, now, which of this period that men were naked? Now, what will come to mind is what the Paleolithic period. It is during this period that men were naked. But later, they used what leaves to cover themselves as what as they, as they developed into the future. All right. Now, I want us to go through some of the paintings and some of the interesting work these guys did. If you watch in my screen on the, on, the, on, the, on the slide, you see some of those paintings. You see the drawings of Beowulf. You see Buffalo. You see, and then you see how they overlap some of these animals. Now, this is to show you how smart and intelligent these people are. You know, that's by the fact that they, they, they don't have cameras, they don't have anything, but they were able to use their creative ingenuity, you know, to build some of these artworks. And now today, we are studying them. Now, if these men can do this in their own time, how much more are we or should we do in our own time? So, if you watch some of the painting, like this very one here. I don't know if you can see it, but I just hope you can see it. Now, that's the head of what? Of, uh, I guess that's a buffalo, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, that's the head of a buffalo. Now, this is done over 2,000 years ago. Over 2,000 years ago. It's even before the invention of writing. Now, let's consider some of the engravings. Now, this is another beautiful engraving that was done by the early men. You know, they used stones to carve on stones. And in subsequent class, I'm going to teach you some of the type of stones we have. We have the, currently in Nigeria, we have the land known as the land of what, 800 soapstone, which is the Iseland, Iseland. Now, this land is known for what, 800 soapstones. Now, those stones are soft stones. Now, I guess that's the same stone that um, the element, it is just, I'm just guessing, maybe that's the same stone they use in their carving. If you see how intricate and then, you know, the way they move with their lines and, okay. So now let's go over to the next image and let's look at their tools and their painting materials. Now, some of the tools used by these Paleolithic men 
like I told you, are carved stones. Yeah, what carved stones? If you see some of them are carved in triangles, some of them are carved like the head of a spear, some of them are carved like knife. You see different carvings and different what each of these tools represents different tools. And then by your right, you will see some of the items that we are picked, some of these items we are picked in the cave, and then it is you know, under speculations that these are what they use for painting. Now, in this bowl here, I guess that's a charcoal, if I'm not mistaken, and then these are etting materials, and this is their bowl they use, you know, in mixing some of these things. And now this is exactly what they use in making these beautiful paintings on the wall. On the wall. All right. Okay, so... Haven't said all this. I want to run down from what we've talked about from the beginning down to, you know, so that you get this in full. Like I told us, that prehistory art, this is the art that existed even before the invention of writing. I said prehistory art is the art that existed even before the invention of writing. So even before we invented writing, there were what? period then. So those period that was existing before that writing, before writing was invented, is known as what? The prehistory period. Now, having said that, well now I now went back to tell us that we have what? Five different periods that fell under the prehistory period. Now, the first period I talked about is the Paleolithic period. And I made mention of the archaeologists that went in with the daughter, you know, for hunting, you know, to search for things. And then the daughter discovered the first painting of the cavemen. And her name, I remember I told you, is Maria. Then we also looked at the developmental period of each of these ages. And then we talked a lot about the Paleolithic people. I told us that they were naked, they live in caves, and they make their paintings on cave wall. Now, all these are what the Paleolithic era or the Paleolithic people went through. Now, Hanon said this. I want to believe you got a lot from this class. So in our subsequent class, mind you, now this is a two-part class. Now the second class, we're going to cover the rest. We're going to look at the Mesolithic, we're going to look at the Neolithic, and then we're going to look at the old, the Bronze Age, and then the Iron Age in our next class. So now, having said this, let me ask you some beautiful questions that I really know you should know because you've been with us, you know, for this class. All right, now let's go straight to the questions. Now, what is prehistory art? I define that over and over and over again. Yes. Yes. Now, if you say it is the period that existed before the invention of writing, you are correct. Now, prehistory is a period that existed even before the invention of writing. And then I'll ask you again. What is the Paleolithic period? Can you try that? All right, you just do that. Don't go back to the slide. Just write it. What do you understand by the word Paleolithic? Explain Paleolithic period. Now, the next thing I want you to consider is to state three major materials and tools that was used by the cavemen. I discussed that in details. I gave you the materials that the, the Paleolithic men used, not other ones. The Paleolithic men use. Now, what are the three materials that you think they use? All right, let me help you. Yes, you said stone. Yeah, you're correct. Stone as a tool, yes. Animal fats, yes, as the oil, yes. Etting materials, now beautiful. Now, these are the three major materials they use, you know, in making their painting. Now, can you state some of the futures of the art in the Paleolithic era? What are the futures? What did they draw? I showed you a lot of pictures. They did carving engraving yes they did painting on the wall yes and some of the paintings features you know buffalo to mention but a few okay now you're welcome to the exam guide now remember we've been talking about art history and then um, we've looked a lot about art history so therefore let's go hit now what we did was cultural and creative arts when the exam guide you click on the subject you did, culture and creative art. Now, the exam guide covers everything. You have subjects like English, math, agriculture, fine art and craft. You have basic science. You have 
basic technology, you have business study to mention but a few. So you can just pick any topic you feel like to try yourself and then you try yourself with it. So for this top, for this class today, we'll talk about the creative art and then we are going to look at creative art. Then you go to subject, topic of interest. So you pick the topic of interest, art, crafts, you know, conflict, citizen, you pick the topic of interest and then we did history. We did history of art. So you click on it and then you say, okay. You say, okay, and then you click on get started. All right. So we are going to look at random questions. All these are questions that is based on art history. So subsequently, we will treat each and every one of them a step after the order. All right, so now let's look at some of these questions. Okay, now let's try question two. The Egyptian stone known as pyramid was built to house dash. The Egyptian stone known as the pyramid was built to house dash. Now, the A will have archive, B will have mummies, C will have paintings, D will have sculpture, and C will have trinkets. So what do you think is the answer? All right, more means. If your answer is B, you're so, so correct. All right, now let's try some other questions. Let's see what we have here. Okay. All right, now let's try question number five. Let me bring you back to, to question number five to Nigeria. Now, modern art started in Nigeria in the early dash century. When did modern art, modern art in Nigeria started? We have the 17th century, we have the 18th century, we have the 19th century, we have the 20th century, we have the 21st century. So which of the century did the modern art start? Okay, the modern art started in Nigeria in the 18th century, but it was actually recorded mainly in the 19th century. So your answer is what? The B. And then finally, let's take out our final question for today. And then, final question for today. All right, there is a lot of questions. So you just look for the one that, you know, that you feel, you just try your hand on each and every one of them. And I guess, based on the value we'll give you here in Sigma Tech, none of those questions should be strange or difficult for you. Okay, so now let's, Ese is a town in the present Dash state of Nigeria. Remember I told us about Ese town, which is known as the land of what, 800 substone. So it is in which state in Nigeria? Now we have the Edo state, we have the Kwara state, we have the Onshu state, we have Oyo state, and then we have River state. So what do you think? Yeah. Did I hear you say Edo? Come on now. All right. If your answer is C, which is Oshun, then you are correct all right thank you for participating in today's class you can practice more questions using the exam guide now the app scores and give a detailed explanation of all the questions at the end of your practice test now you can learn a particular topic of interest with different modes like study mode mock mode and practice mode it also have other features that make learning fun now, it is a must-have for all serious students. Download the app from www.examguide.com if you don't have it yet. See you in the next class. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell, and then share this video to anyone you know that would benefit from it. Thank you, and bye-bye.